Hello and welcome to the Esri GeoDev webinar series. Happy December. This webinar is a continuation of the series we created in the hopes of engaging in developer-related topics and discussions in between Dev Summits. We just completed a Dev Summit in Dubai and now have a couple of Dev Summits coming up, one in Washington, D.C. on January 31st and one in Palm Springs, California, March 5th through 8th. We would love to have conversations like these taking place throughout the year so that when we do meet at one of these Dev Summit conferences, it will be as though we never stopped. We hope you get as much or more out of this webinar than you anticipated. Now, we would like to introduce you to today's webinar, ArcGIS API for JavaScript using Arcade with your apps. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. We've taken a screenshot here of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the right upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer si speaker system by default, but if you would prefer to join over the phone, just, use, uh, just select Use Telephone in the audio pane, and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter, presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. I would now like to introduce Sarah St. Ruth, Product Manager, and De David Bayer, J JavaScript API team integrating Arcade, both presenting to you out of the Esri UK office. Sarah, let's get started, shall we? Thanks, Amy. Hi everyone, as Amy mentioned, I'm Sarah St. Ruth and I'm a product manager at Esri UK and I manage a series of web applications that have been built on our JavaScript API. In the next hour, we're going to discuss what is Arcade, when you can use it and how to use it with the JavaScript API. But first, a little info about Arcade. So Arcade has been around for around two years now and it's been popping up all over the platform. You may have seen or used it in areas such as the Symbology panel in ArcGIS Online or the labeling in ArcGIS Pro. Furthermore, there are also now lots and lots of examples available on our JavaScript API samples pages. So a little bit about why it's called Arcade. So it was named not after Pac-Man or Space Invaders, but instead after covered passageways such as shopping arcades. This follows our tradition of naming languages after street furniture. Some of you may even recall Avenue. Also, it has the extra bonus of having ARC in the title too. ARC can be understood by our clients such as ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Online and Collector. It's also understood by the underlying technologies which power these clients, such as our JavaScript API, runtime SDKs. For that to work well, every application and technology needs to be speaking the same language, and that's where Arcade comes in. You can think of Arcade like formulas in Excel, making easy and complex calculations, which can then be used for visualization, pop-ups, labeling, and analysis. Arcade is lightweight, and it's not been designed to be a full programming language. Also, it's not been designed to be a replacement for Python or geoprocessing. You'll still need to use these even when you're using them in conjunction with Arcade. Now, I want to take a little minute to dig into this last point in that Arcade can be inserted and understood in different areas of our platform, such as symbology, pop ups and attribute calculation. And we call all these different areas profiles. So as part of this webinar, we're going to be looking at the different profiles that can be used with the JavaScript API. In the visualization profile, Arcade allows you to calculate values for each feature in a layer at runtime. You can then use these values as the basis for a data-driven visualization. This is an alternative approach to creating data-driven visualizations based on a single field in the layer. Here I've used an Arcade expression to add the total sales of Christmas trees and the total sale of Christmas ornaments. I then use the result of this expression to display the total sales of our Christmas pop-up shops. Pop-ups. So you can use Arcade in the pop-up template of the JavaScript API. Similar to the visualization 
organization profile, this is useful for situations when you want to display data that isn't present as an attribute value in your feature layer instance. And we'll be digging into this particular point uh, later on in the demonstrations. In this example, I've used the same script as I use in the visualization profile, and now I'm displaying the total sales in the pop-up. Arcade may also be used for label expressions. So these can be used in the feature layer, but they can also be used in scene layers as well. So when you're labeling 3D features. In this example, we've taken the name of the store and I've added the very important information of how many Christmas trees are left in stock. So in the 3D scene views, we can also use Arcade for calculating the elevation of a feature. And we're gonna show you a great example this of this, sorry, a little later on. So a question that I get quite often from our users, but also internally as well, is why do we need Arcade? So you guys might be familiar with the different languages we already support, and that they allow us to do lightweight scripting, such as field calculations or advanced labeling. So why Arcade? I believe this comes down to three core reasons. Supportability. The really cool thing with Arcade is that it's being understood across the S3 platform. So whether this is in web, desktop or mobile, and this portability allows us to write one script that can be understood in all these different clients. So I could create a labeling expression in ArcGIS Pro, which displays a school name alongside the name of the principal or the head teacher. And if that service is, well, if that data is then published to ArcGIS Online, this label would be, would persist which means I don't need to write the same expression multiple times to be understood in different clients. So Arcade hasn't been designed to remove the need for other scripting languages, but instead it makes tasks which have previously required a more complex approach more accessible. So as mentioned, we can align Arcade to Excel formulas, therefore lowering the learning curve you might experience if you root you are using a deeper programming language. For example, I can use a round function to make my field look a little less cumbersome without having to change the data. Well, we've shown you some examples of this. And also a super important feature is the fact that Arcade is secure. Because of its limited scope, in that Arcade is only understood within the profiles and it can't change its environment, it does not have the vulnerabilities associated with a full programming language. So now we know what Arcade is, why it's come about. I'm going to pass you on today to learn a little bit more about the language. Thank you, Sarah. A, a good place um, to begin sort of learning what you can do with Arcade and understanding the language structure is by going to the developers.arcgis.com website. On this website, there is a, a link to an Arcade microsite. So if I click on that here, You'll see that it takes me sort of to a home page where it gives me an example of how to write your first expression and how to understand um, the language. And that guide is, is very useful. If you go into that guide, you can see getting started. Um, and importantly, you can see the release notes. So we're, we're actually on version 1.5 of Arcade. Um, with, Arcade's been around for about two years. Um, and every few months, we release a new version with more function in it and more capabilities in it. Your Arcade 1.0 script will continue to work and be accepted by each version of the, of the language. It's just that we're constantly um, increasing the capabilities and functions that um, are available in, in the language. As um, sort of the RGS platform is, is, is very large, um, there's a version matrix that you can look at which shows you um, which versions of ArcGIS Pro and Arc Enterprise and which versions of our APIs and runtime SDKs um, are supported at different versions of, um, of Arcade. And this is useful to know um, if you're using an older version of, our, of ArcGIS Pro or Enterprise, it's useful to know um, which functions were introduced at which versions of Arcade. So in this guide, there's also details the structure and logic, but also it details the profiles that Sarah was talking about. These are the profiles or places in the platform where you can use Arcade currently. And we're going to be looking at things like labeling and visualization. And when you look at these profiles, um, the way I think about a profile is that this is the reason why my script is being executed. 
So for li the labeling profile, when features are being drawn to the map, this script, your script will be run every time a feature has to be labeled. And the script will be run and be passed in certain variables, like dollar feature, which you can use to work out exactly what label or how you want the label to be constructed. And that, that's why the profiles are very important, is because each different place where you can use Arcade will take into account different global variables and expect your script to return different values. So that, that guide is a very useful sort of introduction to, to using Arcade. But what's also useful in Sight is the function reference. Arcade um, has a lot of functions in it. And what we're trying to do is keep the language very simple but also give you lots of useful functions that embed sort of have the complexity in them. Like in Excel, you can use um, formulas and have lots of functions you can use in your formulas. These functions are the same. We've got sort of date functions, we've got um, maths functions and text functions. And also importantly, we've got lots of geometry functions. We wanted to treat um, spatial and geometry constructs as a first class member of the language. So we have types in Arcade for dealing with polygons, points, lines, and polygons, and we've got functions that will work and, and, and operate on those, on those types. Another useful part of this um, microsite is the playground. And this playground allows you to write and author bits of Arcade and see how the language works. And this is customary in any programming language. I'm going to write the Hello World script. So I'm going to just quickly type in hello world, click test, and you'll see instantly it's executed that bit of script and returned a value. This bit of script is actually interesting for a, for a couple of reasons. One is it's on a single line. I've written an expression very simply as one line of code um, and it's returned instantly and the value has been accepted. It could be a more complex expression. So here I'm concatenating two strings together and I can click test. I could also insert a function, and on this function, I can search for a function by name. Um, so I'm just getting a, win a window out of the way here. I can look at the information on it. Um, I can see how to use it. Um, and I can insert it into my script. So if I click here, I can uppercase hello world and click test. So very quickly, you can begin to use, um, use the different functions in Arcade, learn how to use them, experiment with them. But Arcade, what we realized very quickly is, is single line expressions are great, and there's numerous, numerous use cases where you just want to do a bit of math or combine two fields together. But a lot of the use cases that we were being given were much, much more complicated. So you can, with Arcade, write almost you know, scripts that are multi-line, have variables, which you can concatenate together. And you can begin to write much more complicated scripts. Um, also, you can write conditional scripts. So in this case, I'm gonna write an if statement. If one is less than two, I think we know the answer to this, but I can return one is less than two, else, return one is not less than two. And I can run that script and have it executed. So you can have conditional statements, you can have multi-line statements, you can declare variables. You can also use for loops. So if I do var result equals zero, for var i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus, equals result plus one. So very quickly, I've written a for loop that's going to iterate, and the value has been returned. It's worth pointing out at this point that the language is case sensitive, case insensitive. So if I put an upper case in my, in my property, I'd still get the same result. And the reason of that is that we wanted the language to be as simple and easy to write as, as possible. In the playground, we can also look at the different profiles that we were talking about earlier. And when you switch to a different profile, so if I switch to the labeling profile, it gives me an example set of the globals that will be passed in. So I can 
literally just click on here, click feature name one, test it, and it will return, in this case, value one. I can uppercase it, and I can return that. And these globals are the example globals that will be passed into your script every time it executes. So we've seen a bit of the language now and a bit of how you can use the playground um, to, to author Arcade. But um, this webinar is, sort of, um, is to show you how you can use Arcade in writing your own JavaScript apps. Now, that's a bit of an odd concept. What we're talking about is writing in one programming language script from, uh, okay, albeit a much simpler expression language, but writing the script inside of, a, of another language. And possibly the, the best place to begin to see how you can do that is by going to the developer's website for the JavaScript API. And if you click on sample code, you can search for samples. So here there's six samples which have got Arcade integrated in them, showing you how you can use Arcade in pop-up templates and how you can use Arcade for labeling and so forth. And if I drill into one of those, the way we've integrated Arcade into the JavaScript API is by adding properties to our existing object model and our existing classes. So in this sample, this labeling example here, if I look at the code, I have a standard JavaScript API application. I reference the style sheet, I reference the JavaScript API, I load classes and modules in using the AMD, you know, um, load class loading. And if I go down further down the script, you can see I'm creating a map view, um, and the map is a web map that I'm going to be loading um, layers from. So in this case, it's going to load a feature layer. And very importantly for this sample is I'm loading the labeling information. I'm, I've defined a labeling class. And if I go further up, I can see where I've defined that labeling class. And looking down, I can say it's got a symbol, I've got the label placement above the point and in the center. But the most, the interesting point for this talk is that instead of providing a field, I provided it with an expression. Even though it looks like a field definition there, um, if I um, change this script and change it to lower, and now refresh that application, you'll see that it's actually running a bit of arcade script and I've just lower cased all the labels that it's showing and that's really the approach that's been taken to all the places where you can use arcade in the JavaScript API you literally embed your your arcade expression as a value or a string value in inside of your code now that can be quite cumbersome some some of your script might be multi-line long. You might have lots of strings or text that you're adding into your arcade expression, which means that you're going to have quotes inside of your arcade expression that you, you then want to embed in a string inside of your JavaScript application. And you get into all sorts of problems with um, character escaping. And you have escaped characters of escaped characters of escaped characters. And it can be very messy code. And there's almost two different strategies that you can follow for sort of making that easier to deal with. One approach is that you can use templated JavaScript strings. And the way you use a templated JavaScript string is with this type of apostrophe. And that allows you to write, embed in your JavaScript application, multi-lines of, of another, of, another app, of, of text that are completely separate from the JavaScript itself. And so that's a really neat way of embedding your arcade script inside of the JavaScript inside of your own application. Another approach is you can embed your own um, HTML um, script tags. So I've got a script tag here that I've created earlier. If I put that here, you can see I've created a script tag. I've given it an ID so I can easily uh, pick it out. And I've set its text to uh, type to text slash plain. Now in this case, I'm going to uppercase it. So I'm going to just quickly write my arcade script inside of there. And it'll have no impact to the body or the, the flow of the document. And what I can now do is I can pluck that um, script out of the document and insert it 
where the script expression used to be. So I'm literally going to go to the document, get the element by ID, and and get get, get the text value of in, in inside of it. So if I refresh that, you'll hopefully see that I've uppercased all the all the labels. And so that that's those are two different ways that you can easily embed your arcade script inside of your JavaScript application. I'm going to show you another example, um, and that's the um, um, elevation or feature Z profile. Now, in this script, we're creating um, an elevation um, info object, and again, in here, the, you can see that the way we've defined the expression is just by feature expression info, the expression, and we put the the in this case a very simple bit of um, arcade script into that string. Now this sample allows you to actually change the expression on the fly. So if I change it here and put 100, you can see that I've just changed the balloon height very simply by changing by changing the expression. And what you're seeing there is a combination of data-driven rendering. So we're rendering it based on data, the field data in the application, but it's data-driven and it's logic-driven. It's taking into account our logic that we've defined in Arcade and using that to influence how, how the features are rendered. When you look at all the different profiles, you can easily map so uh, where um, in the API you need to look. Um, to be able to influence and embed your own arcade expressions by looking at the help. So in this case, I've gone to the class breaks renderer, and inside of the class breaks renderer, if I scroll down, I can see that I have something called a value expression. And if I look at that help, it shows me how I can construct a renderer using a value expression to represent the different values that I want my class breaks to be rendered on. And that's really, you know, an important way of navigating our, the API and wherever in a profile, wherever you see a profile of Arcade, you'll be able to find an equivalent value expression or expression setting that you can use in the API to embed your Arcade script. Now I'm going to cut, pass back to Sarah, who's going to show you a few other examples of, of where you can where, sorry, I'm just switching, where you can integrate Arcade into your applications. Thanks, Dave. So what Dave showed us was great, and it was using Arcade natively with the JavaScript API. However, I like to write as little code as possible. So I'm going to show you how we can do that using a web map and referencing it in the application. You might not always want to do this, but it is definitely something to consider. So we're going to look uh, again, my, my absolute favorite capability of Arcade, and this is the on-the-fly data creation. This is hugely powerful, and it's fixing an age-old problem of finding some great data, but not having the exact field you need. So I've got an example up here where you might find that you've got car showroom data, which tells us the monthly sales for each dealership. We want to symbolize the dealerships by the average monthly sales over the last year but this is in a field in the data. Previously, we'd have to go get a local copy of that data, perform a field calculation, and then republish the data to be able to use it in our own applications. But by using Arcade, we can stop all that pain from happening. So as an, an expression, like the one I'm just about to show, there you go. Um, so we're using a function called average here, and just putting in an array, um, which is all of the different fields that we have in our data. We can create the average sales on the fly and then use that for our visualization, meaning we lose the headache, all that extra processing in exchange for writing a simple script. Plus, with the expression being on the source data rather than a downloaded snapshot, it means we always have a live view of that data. So now we're going to run through this with an example in ArcGIS Online. So here I've got a data set which is from the Living Atlas. Now, if you haven't used the Living Atlas before, it is a um, it's the largest repository of spatial data. 
and it's got some great content in there from both local and global scales as well so I definitely recommend next time you're hunting for some data to take a look there and um, so in this example I've got the 2011 UK census data which is detailing economic activity so I'm just going to click on one of these we can see what's in there this isn't data that I own this has been published by another data custodian so if I want to make any changes to this data again I have to go ahead and download it if that's even enabled on the service now as I said I don't own this data it's got lots of useful information there and what I want to show is the most predominant economic activity for each of these output areas I can do that really simply using Arcade. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So in our symbology, we've now got the option to create a custom expression. So here, I've just combined a couple of the fields together um, and created different variables for these. And this is just because um, they were very, very similar. So I've grouped them together. Uh, then I've created an array of these fields and I'm passing this into a custom function, which is a fantastic capability of Arcade is that you can create these custom functions. In this custom function, it's doing a for loop, which is um, looking through all of those fields and it's returning the one which has got the highest value. If there are two which have the same uh, highest value, then I want them to combine them together and create another category for, for me. And then I'm just returning my function. So let's have a look at what that looks like in ArcGIS Online. So now what you can see is a very pink map, but it is displaying um, the most prominent economic activity, which is, as expected, is economically active. However, if we pan the map, we can see the areas such as Leeds, which has got a huge student population. Uh, we can see the changes in the economic activity based on that. Now, just for a second, let's think about what's just happened. I don't own this data, but it was able to answer my questions using my own expression and creating a new data. If the underlying values in this data set change by the data owner, Arcade would be using this expression so I would see the live changes, keeping the insight I'm getting really dynamic. So I've saved this as a web map, which means my data, arcade expression and symbology is all being stored as an item in ArcGIS Online. And because of that, it's given me an item ID. So what I can do is I can just copy this. And I can input this into a JavaScript application. So here I'm just using one of those JavaScript samples that Dave showed earlier. And I'm just going to scroll down here and we can see that we've got a variable called web map and it's bringing in a new web map and it's just asking for an ID. So I can put my ID in here and I can just hit refresh. Now, what we'll actually see is the original map because I didn't hit save at the end. So we can see it's coming up orange here. So I'm just going to hit save. And the reason why I did that is I kind of wanted to show you the benefit of just using a web map ID in your JavaScript applications. This means that you can have people uh, change different elements of the web map, and that's always going to be reflected in your JavaScript application. So you don't have to go in and change any code. All you have to do is just reference the ID. And here we go. So it's bringing that through. So the next thing that I'd like to talk to you about is a brand new capability which was released at the latest version of Arcade. Um, so this new functionality is called Feature Set Support. So in the examples that we've shown so far today, Arcade allows you to work with a feature and manipulate its information, and then you can create rich new attributes on the fly. But what could you do with Arcade if you had the ability to work with multiple features in that layer, or even features from a completely different layer? And this is where feature sets come in. So feature sets are a new set of arcade data functions, and you can use these with feature layers. These feature layers can be in your map, or they can be in ArcGIS Online. Um, and you can use multiple features in that layer, uh, and they can be used when you're authoring a pop-up or when you're calculating fields. Because you can, although we're not focusing on that today, you can use arcade for field 
population. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in an uh, example. Again, I'm using uh, layers from the Living Atlas. So these are two separate layers. I've got world countries here. And I've got sedimentary basins of the world. Now, for, there is absolutely no relationship between these two layers. They're actually published by completely di two different organizations. Um, and I've not done any pre prior processing to this data. And what I want to display is a pop up which tells me how much of that country has a sediment basin as a percentage. Now, previously, if I was going to do that, again, you can kind of see where this is going. You'd have to take a local copy. This time you'd have to run a couple of geoprocessing tools and then you'd have to publish this back up. If that data changed, if the sedimentary boundary uh, basins changed, then you would have to do that process again and then update your service before you can use it in your application. Now with Arcade, we can just put a, um, an expression on there. So what I'll do is just gonna go to configure pop-up and you can see that I can add a custom expression. So here I've brought in a variable and I've called in this feature set by name. So this is the new functionality. So if I go over here into our globals, what you're going to be able to see is feature set by name and feature set by ID and all of the layers that I've got in that web map. Now, feature set by name and feature set by ID, it doesn't actually matter which one you use. Um, I definitely recommend using feature set by ID if you're going to be changing the name of the layer. Um, if not, then it doesn't really matter. So we've brought in the sedimentary basins of the world as a variable. And we're performing an intersects between the um, sedimentary basins and the country. It's then looking in all of the intersections and it's calculating the area of all of those intersections. And then at the end, I'm returning um, the entirety of that sedimentary bound, uh, so sedimentary area. I'm dividing it by the area of the country and times it by 100 to get that percentage. So what I can do now is if I just click on Germany, for example, it's doing the calculation and it's returning back 60.56% of the total area of Germany. Again, if we were to change any of the data, whether it was the boundaries of the countries or whether it's the boundary or whether or not it was the sedimentary basins, uh, this pop-up would uh, automatically be calculating that and would return back uh, the live view of the data. Again, making it really, really dynamic. I've got one last example to show you. Um, this is looking at, again, another two layers that are available in the Living Atlas. Um, we're just off the coast of Scotland here, and this is looking at the uh, lifeboat stations and various incidents which have happened uh, since 2008 and 2016. Now, what I've got on here is a expression which is doing a 15 uh, mile buffer around each of the incidents and it's returning how many stations are within that 15 mile buffer. So if we go over here, for example, we can see this was within one. And if we go over here, you see this is within zero. So I just wanted to show you how we can kind of string these uh, different, um, different functions together with feature set support. So I'm just going to configure the pop-up. And this is actually a really simple expression. I've just brought in, again, another variable called feature set, where the feature set by name and brought in the lifeboat station locations. I've buffered each of the incidents by 15 miles. And then I performed an intersection. Oh, sorry, an intersect it's between the buffer and the stations. And then I'm returning the count. So you can imagine if any more data was added to this, this would already be uh, being calculated. So every single pop-up, every single feature that was added, the pop-up would be that calculation. If I was to move any of these points, it would be automatically calculating uh, the correct data to be returned in the pop-up. 
So really, really powerful. Um, there's loads and loads of capabilities that are going to be coming out with this. We're going to see loads more blog articles coming out of it as well. Um, so it's it really, really exciting. It's brand new functionality that you can take advantage of right now. So with that, I'm going to actually pass you back to Dave. And he's going to go through just how you can troubleshoot your scripts if you are getting into any trouble with them. <laughs> um, so let me pass you back. Sarah, is my screen being shared? Not yet. Yeah. All right. Hello. Yeah. Um, hopefully you can see. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, okay. Um, we started off this talk with some very simple examples of just concatenating a few fields, and Sarah's examples have been multi lines of code, complicated for loops and buffers and and so forth, and. What it can be very difficult to do is understand or see why your scripts are going wrong. As Arcade is embedded in your map, you won't really have, you don't have an integrated development environment to step through your code and see why something is not working. You know, it's worth sort of thinking about the indications that your script isn't correct when, you, um, when things start going wrong. So the way things might go wrong is you might not get any labels on your map. Or, or when you do the pop-up, the pop-up might have a blank value where you were expecting a value, or features won't get rendered on the map. And what's happening there is um, the, the APIs and the runtime SDKs are trying to draw your features, but your scripts, some bit of logic in your script is going wrong, and it's not being able to draw that feature. And rather than crash the app completely, it's choosing not to show that, um, show that feature or that label. Um, because you don't have an integrated development environment, there's a sort of some old school ways that you might think about debugging your script. And I'm going to show you a few of those now. So if I go back to um, the playground, and if I look back at the example, one of the easiest ways of, of finding a problem with your script is to put lots of console messages in it here. So if I could put console got here, um, bar f equals that, console got here too, turn F, and now if I test that, you can see it's doing exactly what the script did before. But what's interesting is on the messages is you can actually see each of the messages that should have come out. And both the pop-up editor and the playground have this ability to see these console messages and for you to test your scripts and see them see them running or see the output of what's being run. If I show this example failing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uppercase a field that doesn't exist. So this field does not exist. What I'm using here is a bracket notation to get hold of the field. Usually you can just do dollar feature dot field name. And for most fields that will work. There are a few fields where there's spaces in the field or strange punctuation in the field. But if you use those in Arcade, they, they, they're not legal identifiers in the language. So now if I run this script, you can see it's got test. Um, field has not been found. Um, and if I go look at the messages, I can see it got to here, but it didn't get to get got to here too. So you can see that there's this old school way of debugging, but it does allow you to identify where in your script the logic is breaking down. A big part of why scripts go wrong is because of data. So if I look at this script, I can, I can see a value coming out. And what the pop-up editor and the playground allow you to do is to change the values. So you can simulate different data conditions going in. So I might put hello here. And when I run this script, you can see a different value is coming out. But a common cause of um, errors, data errors, is when there's no value, a null value, or an empty string value. And that can throw a lot of scripts. And the way you can deal with those kinds of issues is by using a couple of the functions in Arcade. So if I look at is empty, feature name one, I can return A. Otherwise, I can return the actual value. Oh, if I cleanly get it. 
So now I can see that because the feature is empty, I'm getting the, the letter A out. But if I put a value in and now test it, I get a different value. So it's important when you're dealing with your different um, field values to consider whether they can be null or consider what values could really throw your script. With this, what we're seeing is that the script is getting quite complex. Um, and we spoke earlier about trying to keep scripts really simple and single line. And there's another function that's often useful to use, and that's um, default value. And what this does is perform a lot of what I've just done in a single statement. So if I put in $feature.name1 or A, so in a single line, what this script says is if um, name one is um, empty or has an empty value, return A, otherwise return the value that's in name one. So here it's returning B. If I set its value to null and test it, it now returns A. So you can still write very succinct and, and small scripts um, to make it easier to write. But it's important that you do consider what your script will do when you get unexpected data values. Another thing you can do in your scripts is to break your script down into functions. So I'm going to create a function called do logic. It's going to console out that entered do logic. So you can see that it's gone into the function and it's going to return a times 10. And now when I run that, you can see I've got the value. It's called the what we call a user defined function. I've got the message so I can see that it's entered that function. And what you can do with very complicated scripts is break them down into, into lots of sub functions so you can more easily debug it and see where it's gone wrong. So those are a few sort of areas where you can um, find ways of debugging your scripts and identifying what is going wrong with your scripts. Um, I'm going to change tack a bit now and briefly look at what's going to be happening next with Arcade. So we're at version 1.5 of Arcade and we've just introduced the feature set support. And it's worth thinking about now what we're going to be working on, on next in Arcade for the next release. So typically with Arcade, each release has concentrated on two main areas. One is increasing the number of functions in the language. And these functions are intended to make you more productive and to take away sort of boilerplate logic and put it all together in a simple, easy to use function. And so in the next release, we'll be extending and adding new functions. If there's any functions that you should that you think should be in a language, please do let us know on ideas.arcgis.com as we look at that regularly for ideas of how we can make the language better and ideas for things that we can add to the language. The other area that we'll be looking at with um, Arcade is increasing the number of places where it can be used in the platform. So um, in the profile that you saw listed, um, there was an attribute rules um, profile. And um, in the next release of Pro, you'll be able to um, write attribute rules so that you can calculate values when you insert features or edit features. And those values will be automatically calculated in the GA database. So as you edit and add your data, field um, parameters, um, field values can automatically be calculated. And that can be published to a service online, and it will automatically, as you edit your data in web applications, have those low-level um, data field calculations automatically done for you. Um, we'll also be extending um, the feature set support, adding new capabilities in, into feature sets. So there's, there's a lot of exciting sort of um, areas where Arcade will be growing, and also we'll be trying to make sure that all of the capabilities that you've seen today work across the platform in all the different apps as they get updated and upgraded. I'm now going to pass you back to Sarah, who's going to sort of look at some useful resources that you might um, want to use to find find um, to find out how more about Arcade and more things that you can do with Arcade. Thanks, Dave. So I definitely recommend that the first place you go to look for Arcade is the Arcade developers pages. So you can get there directly from the developers pages or you can just add Arcade uh, to the end. And um, this is, like Dave showed, the most useful places, loads and loads of information there to get you started and loads of examples. The next area I would try is our GitHub pages. So our GitHub pages 
have um, loads of expressions in there that you can begin to use. So there might already be something that you want to do that's already available on there and you can just copy that. The next area is our just blog. So or for here, you can see that we've had blogs literally released um, within the last week uh, that look at custom field calculations. We also to look through feature sets. You can see this is going to be a series. Um, so there's loads and loads of information out there already on our ArtGIS blog. So definitely worth taking a look. And here's just an example of these. Um, I would definitely say that uh, the last place to, or you know, an additional place for you to look is YouTube. So we've been demonstrating Arcade now through a number of our conferences. So this is um, at our user conference, uh, but also in the various develop uh, dev summits as well. So there's loads and loads of content out there. Um, showing you how you can get started with Arcade in our clients, but also using our JavaScript APIs and runtimes. So with that, that concludes our presentation today on Arcade and using it with the JavaScript API. So I'll pass it back to you, Amy. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. And thank you, David. We're now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. We've received quite a few, and we will try to get through as many as possible. But whatever we do not get to today, we will address in a GeoNet blog post after this webinar. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Our first question is, can Arcade access fields from related tables? So um, yes, um, but I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to qualify that slightly. So um, not all profiles have access to all the same functions. So if you're re rendering or labeling, you won't be able to get to, to the related information because the drawing pipeline needs to be as fast as possible. And if you're writing scripts that then go and query related tables, that would really slow down the drawing pipeline. But if you're looking at the pop-up or the field cat or the field calculate profile, you can use the feature set function to access the related information, but you have to construct the where clause yourself. So you can use the you can take dollar feature and you can construct a filter statement. So I, I recommend you look at the filter function in Arcade, um, feature set by name or feature set by ID. Um, you can, if it's a related table in in your feature service, there's a in the pop-up profile. There's something called Dollar Data Store, and that lets you get to the different layers and tables in your in your um, in your feature service. So you'll be able to construct a query that finds the related records using a filter statement, and then you can for loop over them. You can perform statistics on them, and so forth. Um, I hope that that answers your question. All right, perfect. Thank you, David. Um, can you use Arcade like a field calculator to edit the values of a field based on an expression? Um, I'm going to quickly share my screen. Um, or Sarah, can you switch switch to my screen? Um, as a blog article is, has literally just been um, published on that. Um, so um, literally yesterday, a blog article was published um, showing how you can do a field calculate um, against your data either in, inside of the map viewer or against your item. And you can see here that you can either choose to use SQL to do your field calculation or you can use Arcade. So I, I think that's what you're asking, that that's, that that's basically definitely possible with Arcade that you can do a field calculation using 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 arcade type logic. Perfect, thank you. A lot of the syntax looks like JavaScript. How is arcade different from the ArcGIS JavaScript API? So um, we, we're glad it looks like um, JavaScript. Um, we tried to make a language that was as familiar as possible and we looked at a number of different programming languages that are out there. And you know we looked at C style languages, C++ style languages, Visual Basic, um, all these different languages, and we wanted it to be as familiar as possible. And so it does have a lot of similarity to JavaScript. Saying that, it's important to say it's not JavaScript. It is a much more constrained language. Um, the functions are different. Some of the syntax is different. Um, so you can't use it in the same way that you use JavaScript. 
the way of thinking about it is it is a calculator. It takes values in, does the logic, and returns a value out. Um, it's case insensitive. It's designed to work easily with field data, which is um, typically case insensitive. So, what's, so what I would say is we're glad it looks a bit like JavaScript, but it's not JavaScript. Okay. All right. Um, can Arcade return more than one value or perhaps an array of more than one value? So um, that really goes to the profiles. None of the profiles currently require you to return an array. So if you look at the profiles we have at the moment, they're labeling. They expect a text string to be returned. If you, you look at the field calculate profiles, they're putting a single value in into um, into a field. If you look at rendering and the visualization profiles, so none of our profiles currently expect um, to return you to return an array. Saying that, um, the code will attempt to um, cast your return value to the appropriate type that the expression is expecting. So it may be that your array just automatically gets cast to a string, and that's what gets inserted. There's nothing in Arcade itself that stops an, an array being returned. It's more that the profiles, there's no profile that wants you to return an array currently. All right, perfect. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Um, will Arcade render or label reflecting values that stream or change real time? That's a good question. I don't actually know. I I don't know the answer. To that. I think we might have to we might have to take that one away with us and 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 see what's in the API um, to see whether it can automatically calculate the value on a on a stream layer. I suspect it can, but I don't know. So I wouldn't want. I, I think it's one that we'll have to experiment with and see, or well, or ask the other developers um, what. Um, whether it's got that capability. So it's one, it's a question we'll answer um, in the in the follow-up to this uh, presentation. All right, we have some homework to do. Okay, can we use Arcade for pop-ups in ArcGIS API for Python? Um, again, we're gonna have to do more homework for you on this one. So, um, our, so I think it depends on the version. And and you know and the different sports. So you can use um, Arcade and pop-ups in ArcGIS Pro, and so it's built into our runtime APIs and into our JavaScript APIs. So I suspect you can, but I don't 100% know. So it's one we'll have to do some homework for to answer you for. All right. How does Arcade work with attachments like photos? Um, so Arcade currently does. And have any ability to specifically get attachments um, in in the same way it can get related um, tables um, you can do construct queries that query other layers in your in your in your feature service however there's no data types that will understand the blobs that are um, that are attachments so there's no current capability in arcade to get um, the attachments themselves. If that's something that's important to you, please do let us know on ideas.rjs.com so we can begin to think about how we might incorporate those kind of use cases. All right, that's a great, some great advice there. Um, is Arcade scripting exposed to developers? For example, can I write an add-in with the ArcGIS Pro.net SDK that utilizes Arcade expressions? So in um, yeah. Yeah. So, in the same way that we've exposed Arcade expressions in the runtime SDKs and in the JavaScript APIs, you will be able to just set expression properties on anywhere where you can use an Arcade expression. We haven't exposed the runtime of Arcade itself um, as yet, um, but anywhere you can use Arcade in embedded in maps and pop-ups, you'll be able to find a property. Um, a property to do that. Okay. Is so our, I, so oh. I, say, I haven't checked the the pro API itself, but I that's my I, I strongly suspect is it's in the runtime SDK.
Okay, perfect. Uh, and in the JavaScript APIs that it's also in that API. Okay, sorry, there was a little bit of a delay. Uh, is Arcade only used in ArcGIS Online? Um, sorry, um, no, um, it's used in ArcGIS Pro, Collector, what other apps yeah. is it in? So, so it's actually been used in the new Collector Aurora um, for different, for various different profiles. I, I can't remember which ones it is off the top of my head. I feel like there's field calculation okay. in there. Um, there's visualize, there'll be symbology. Yeah, visualization and also um, the pop-ups will be in there as well with Arcade. So what you will see is it is coming through to more and more of the new applications which, um, which are utilizing the newer technologies, the new APIs, the new runtimes. Yeah. It, it's worth saying, I mean, that's the single biggest goal of Arcade is the idea that you define a map once in the platform, whether it's in Pro or in the Map Viewer, and it can be used everywhere in every app, whether it's a web app, a pro app, a runtime app, an app running on a iOS device. The idea of Arcade was that it was a portable way of embedding this extra bit of logic in your map so that you can make your maps more dynamic and more capable. All right, perfect. Can you use Arcade or Arcade generated pop ups in operations dashboards? Um, again, I suspect you can, but we will need to check the version of the um, operations dashboard. And with all of these things, um, all of these individual apps have different release cycles. So it really does depend when that app is next updated, which capabilities of Arcade it has in it. So um, if it doesn't have the capability, please add it to ideas.rgs.com, the collector um, app. One of the biggest items in uh, in ideas to ideas.com was adding um, Arcade into Collector, and that was listened to and 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 added um, because it because it was a useful useful to useful to you. All right, is Arcade language available in ArcMap for desktop? No. Um, no, it, it's it's not available in ArcMap. It is in Pro. It is in Pro. All right. What is the difference between what I can do with Arcade versus what I can do with Python with regards to rendering or labeling on an expression? Um, nothing except portability. If you write a Python expression, if you want that to run in Collector, there's no way of getting your Python to run in a Collector app. And there's no way of getting it to run in a map in the online map viewer. So Python is an excellent choice for for writing for writing um, labeling expressions and for writing geoprocessing. But it's not a portable path if you want to run your maps and view your maps online and in other platforms and environments. So we're in no way with Arcade trying to um, get you used to use Arcade in preference to Python. It's literally what your use case is and what you're trying to do. If you're trying to disseminate a map to a broad number of users across a broad number of platforms, Arcade is an excellent choice for that. Um, if you've not got those use cases, Python is an excellent way forward if that's what you're more familiar with, with writing and authoring code in. Okay, great. And then for our very last question, does the ArcGIS Pro field calculator support Arcade syntax like it does Python? Um, the ArcGIS Pro field calculator does have an Arcade um, choice. So yes, you can just put choose from the Pro list um, Arcade, sorry, from the language list in, in ArcGIS Pro, you can choose Arcade and then you, you can write Arcade and everything you can write in the playground that we were showing you will, will work the same way. All right. Thank you so much, David. And thank you, Sarah. Then thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, ArcGIS API for JavaScript using Arcade with your apps. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me using my email address in your follow-up email that you receive. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on this presentation, and we would appreciate it greatly if you would complete that and provide your feedback.
We're always looking to improve. We will be providing a recording of this presentation, which will be available within seven to 10 business days on the go.esri.com slash geodev page where you registered for this webinar. On behalf of Esri and our presenters, thank you so very much for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.